Welcome to another Eagle Moss Star Trek, the official Starships collection review. This time, it is the USS Enterprise. Yes, the USS Enterprise XCV-330 special issue. This is an XL. One of the larger ships of the collection. Interesting view. Class Unknown Registry XCV-330 Launched sometime before 2143 Speed less than warp 4 The USS Enterprise XCV-330 Sometime in the 22nd century, Starfleet launched the first USS Enterprise. We know next to nothing about the first spe spaceship to bear the name USS Enterprise. We know it was launched before 2143 and that it had an unusual ring-shaped design in the registry XCV-330 because of the date. It must have been an Earth rather than a Federation ship. An Earth ship rather than a Federation ship. Years later, it would be included in a display showing the history of the ships that had the name Enterprise. But the rest is a mystery. The history of the ring ship, the most obscure of Enterprises, had its origins in 1964 and has been sneaking onto the screen ever since. The ring ship was originally one of Matt Jeffrey's rejected designs for the Enterprise, one of dozens of sketches he produced in 1964 as he looked for a design direction for Roddenberry's ship. If the name Jeffrey sounds familiar, it's because in the original series and other series afterwards, Jeffrey's uh, had a system of access tubes that were called Jeffrey's tubes in each ship. Jeffrey spent time on this popular design producing several drawings showing it from different angles, one of which provided the basis for the painting on the US Enterprise's rec deck or recreation deck. The ring ship makes its first and most famous appearance on the wreck deck when Decker is giving the Ilya probe a tour of the Enterprise. And you can see it right there. We have a sailing ship, then we have the um, oh, uh, carrier Enterprise, which was later to be seen in a movie the space shuttle and then I can't see what that other one. Oh, that's the original Enterprise side Decker's head Rick Sternbach's design for the Vulcan ship is in unification was inspired by Jeffrey's original ring concepts When Doug Drexler was designing the NX-01, he put forward several designs that incorporated the ring, suggesting that this was a technology that predated the arrangement of nacelles, saucer, and engineering section that we are familiar with now. I'd never seen that design. Fascinating, as Mr. Spock would say. Drexler took all the important elements of the ring ship and used them in this the basis for the first new Vulcan ship that we saw on Enterprise. Very nice work. Aircraft carrier shuttle NX-01 
Mike Okuda produced this painting of the ring ship that appeared in the 602 bar where Star Trek's equivalent of astronauts congregated in an in Admiral Force's office. The Enterprise XCV-330 appeared in the 2011 Ships of the Line calendar. If you've never seen those calendars, they are, well, gorgeous. The CG model created for that was used for the basis for a physical model that could be seen in Admiral Marcus's office in Star Trek Into Darkness. And you can see it right there, beside Peter Weller. And there's also the Phoenix. And they have this nice little addition in here about the, the motion pictures lost aliens. The ring ship wasn't the only obscure element introduced in the motion picture. There were also several alien races that have been largely forgotten. An Arcturian clone having his head fitted. On the table to the left you can see masks for several other species, including Saurians and Betelgeusians. Or Betelgeusians. Amazerite writes. Ronda writes. Now, of course, we remember that one, that character from the motion picture. Um, look how my magazine has been ripped. I just took this out of the box. I did not do that. Arcturians, Zara Knights, they liked a lot of, they liked a lot of knights. Saurians, Kenormians, Shaman Priest, we are the Knights of Knee. Mega rights. Lots of rights. Uh, Rigelians. Kazarites. And Betelgeusians. Or Betelgeusian. It's, I'm sure it's Beetle Geysians. So let's take a look at this. Where else are you going to get designs like this? Eagle Moss can be expensive, yes. But where else are you going to get these designs without buying a garage kit that's expensive and hard to put together and then you have to paint it? or a paper model that you have to put together. Trying to be careful here. This is a substantial size. USS Enterprise. Now, as you can see right there, there's a, a, a seam or something. It's kind of sloppy. Yeah, very sloppy. This was a model. I'd put some uh, body putty on there. It's, I, when I put models together, I, I actually used the body putty used on car bodies. It's red. It's perfect. Put it on there, let it dry, and let it sand it's smooth. Now, this is, I can tell you, this is plastic, these rings. This, I can tell, is metal. 
all the way back to here. You can see where it attaches right there. Whoop, sorry. It's a big model. <laughs> get closer the windows are painted white hold it steady looks like some blemishes along the seam there I'm not really sure what that is. I don't know where the bridge is. Gene Roddenberry did not want the Enterprise to look conventional 60's designs. And he thought this design too conventional. Even though it's very unique. Um, you gotta love the paint detail on these rings. Some green accent there. Another green accent. Another green. So between the two rings we have three attaching pieces which one of them uh, is attached to the primary hull I guess you would call it and I guess these are the engines good detail there at Eagle Moss but right below it the sloppiness takes away from it It's almost a blue, a very, very light blue paint job. But unfortunately, they say little is known about it, so we don't know where the bridge is exactly. Um, phasers. We don't know about that. Oh. I don't want to miss this part right there. Look at those two red circles. Not sure what those are either. Can't get the camera in there really tight to see either. But where else are you going to get this? You could scratch build one. All the other options are either expensive or time consuming, or you have to have a certain amount of skill. I, I, that's why I love this collection. Star Trek has been around since nineteen, since the late nineteen, or yeah, mid nineteen sixties, and it's still going. You have decades worth of interesting designs, and I'm a design junkie. Can you imagine what this would have looked like on the screen? On a flyby? Remember the beginning credits of Star Trek? I'm so used to the Constitution class, I just don't know what to think about this. I like this design. But I'm glad it ended up the way it did, aren't you? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next video.